So members of Congress have just joined in a lawsuit to stop the ATF's new pistol brace rule. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the ATF needs to be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection or insurance. And USCC is actually the company that I've used for a long time, even before they became a sponsor. I bought their membership. I use it just in case I ever have to act in self-defense and need some sort of legal protection. So I highly recommend USCCA. Take a look into their membership, into their programs, and I will leave a dedicated link for the channel link down below in the detail section and also in the comment section. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing a lawsuit which challenges the ATF's new rule on stabilizing braces or pistol braces, which was published on January 31st. This new pistol brace rule makes it so that almost any pistol with a brace attached will now likely be considered to be an SBR and therefore subject to the NFA's restrictions. In response to this final rule being published, multiple lawsuits have been filed against the ATF. And just recently, a major lawsuit was filed in a federal district court in North Dakota. In the lawsuit, you have 25 states who have joined the Firearms Regulatory Accountability Coalition, or FRAC, and also SB Tactical in their lawsuit against the ATF and their final rule on pistol braces. And now, just recently, 12 members of the Senate and 21 members of the House have filed an amicus brief in support of this lawsuit to stop the ATF's pistol brace rule. In this lawsuit, FRAC and SB Tactical are joined by West Virginia, North Dakota, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, Virginia, and also Wyoming. In the lawsuit, the plaintiffs argue that the APA authorizes this court to hold unlawful and set aside agency actions, findings, and conclusions found to be arbitrary, capricious, and abuse of discretion, or otherwise not in accordance with law or in excess of statutory jurisdiction, authority, or limitations, or short of statutory right. They go on to argue that the rule is a final agency action that exceeds the ATF's statutory authority. The rule regulates pistols and other firearms equipped with stabilizing braces, even though the text, structure, history, and purpose of the NFA and GCA show that the statute does not regulate such weapons. The FRAC lawsuit also hits on the issue of the rule of lenity. The lawsuit states at minimum, the statutes and the rule are grievously ambiguous as applied to stabilizing braces and thus the adjudications violate the rule of lenity. The adjudications are invalid because they interpret the NFA and GCA in a way that encompasses millions of weapons undoubtedly in common use and thus raises grave constitutional doubts under the Second Amendment. They also briefly hint at the Second Amendment's common use arguments and in this section they state that the ATS rule also construes the statute in a way that would raise grave constitutional doubts under the Second Amendment. With millions of stabilizing braces in circulation, even by the ATF's conservative estimates, braced weapons are plainly in common use and thus protected by the Second Amendment. In that section of the lawsuit, they are citing to the Bruin case and also the Supreme Court's decision in Caetano versus Massachusetts, which was a decision that actually found that 30,000 stun guns in possession within the U.S., made stun guns in common use and therefore are protected for the purposes of the Second Amendment. The argument here is that pistol braces or firearms with pistol braces attached to them are much more in common use than the 30,000 stun guns, which were already found to be protected by the text of the Second Amendment. So if 30,000 stun guns is enough, then obviously millions and millions of pistols with braces on them are clearly in common use. Well, now you have members of Congress who are actually supporting this lawsuit and have filed an amicus brief supporting FRAC in the 25 states who are plaintiffs. In the brief, the members of Congress start by pointing out that this rule clearly impacts arms and conduct protected by the text of the Second Amendment. They state, indeed, the Second Amendment protects modern instruments that facilitate armed self-defense that are in common use today. Pistols with support braces readily meet those criteria. Millions of Americans rely on support braces to use their pistols safely and accurately for self-defense. ATF itself estimates that between 3 and 7 million pistol braces are in circulation in the United States. 
the Congressional Research Service put that number even higher at between 10 and 40 million. They go on to state that as these numbers show, pistol braces are far more popular than other modern self-defense instruments that the Second Amendment undoubtedly protects. The Second Amendment thus protects the right to own pistol braces. Then they go on to argue that the ATF's rule burdens Second Amendment rights in multiple ways. In particular, it subjects armed braces to taxation and registration requirements that carry serious criminal penalties for violations. To impose such restrictions after Bruin, the government must show that they are consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation. Only then may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. But ATF made no attempt in its rulemaking to comply with that command. And such restrictions clearly would not pass muster if applied to other constitutional rights. Yet despite the Supreme Court's instruction, the Second Amendment is not a second-class right subject to an entirely different body of rules than other Bill of Rights guarantees, the rule here tries to do precisely that. So there in this section, the members of Congress are saying that the ATF is clearly even violating what the Supreme Court just said in Bruin. They didn't even attempt to justify this rule using text, history, and tradition. Instead, they are continuing to try to treat our Second Amendment right as a second-class right. Then they also go on to state that such requirements are a historical and unconstitutional. They are little more than a half loaf measure aimed at deterring gun ownership. Again, the whole goal of this rule is simply to chill the conduct here, which is the exercise of your Second Amendment rights. Then in the final section, they argue that Congress did not grant the ATF authority to criminalize the exercise of Second Amendment rights. And again, this is very important because this is coming from members of Congress. This is members of Congress telling the court here that Congress and this statute here did not give the ATF this type of authority. In this section, they focus heavily on how the plain text of the NFA and GCA are not ambiguous. In fact, the text is very clear and pistols with braces on them were never intended to actually be included in the definition of an SBR. But even if a court here were to find that there is some sort of ambiguity in the language, rules like the rule of lenity would therefore direct the court to find that this pistol brace rule, this new rule, and the ATF's interpretation is not correct. Instead, they should actually rule in a way that is most favorable to us, the people, not the ATF. And really instead, the only option the ATF really has if they want to engage in this type of conduct is for Congress itself to amend the statutory language, to amend the definitions in a way that the ATF actually wants. But again, the ATF doesn't have the authority to do this on their own. And it's for all these reasons that these members of Congress are now joining the fight to stop the ATF's pistol brace rule. So that's a really important update in this whole frack lawsuit. Currently, there are multiple lawsuits attacking the pistol brace rule, but now you have frack this lawsuit which is joined in by FRAC, SB Tactical, and 25 named states. Those are all the plaintiffs. And then now multiple members of Congress are actually filing an amicus brief in support of their lawsuit against the ATF. Things are finally kind of heading in the right direction. The goal right now of all these lawsuits is to try to get some sort of temporary relief, maybe a temporary restraining order or a preliminary injunction. And the goal of that is to halt the new rule and stop it from going into full force and effect after the 120 days. But of course, if we get any more information, I will let you all know. If you like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.